Good evening, everyone. Last week, at the end of davening on Shabbos, I was approached by a number of members at uh, NHBZ who had a few questions on uh, last week's parsha, the Torah portion, which was Parsha's Truma. And I was so inspired by their desire to understand the Torah, to understand what it was trying to say, that uh, I couldn't stop thinking about the question, and I decided that for this week, I would, uh, I would surround my remarks about their question. In reality, that's the point of the Torah portion of each and every week. The point is not to just view it as part of the liturgy. It is something that the, the cantor, the, the chazan recites, and then we move on to the next part. But rather, it's something that we're supposed to question, we're supposed to engage, we're supposed to think about, it's supposed to affect us. And that's why I want to uh, dedicate this week's remarks to that group of men. The question is based on an observation. Parashas Truma describes the details regarding most of the fixtures and the objects used in the tabernacle, used in the Mishkan. An exception to this rule, however, is the Mizbeach HaKatoris, the altar upon which the incense was brought. And it's not mentioned there. Instead, it's men mentioned at the end of Parsha's Tetzava, the Parsha that we read this past week. And the question is, why is this altar, the Mizbeach HaZahav, the Mizbeach HaKatoris, it's one and the same, the golden altar, the altar of the incense, why is it mentioned at the end of our Parsha? It seems out of place. And this question is such a fundamental one that many of the biblical commentators discuss it. Tonight, we're going to discuss the approach of Nachmanides, the Ramban, to see how he addresses the question. The Ramban builds up the question that our members asked, and he notes that the incense altar, the Mizbeach HaKetores, is listed along with the Shulchan, the stack that would ho house the Shobra, the Lechem upon him, and the menorah, the candelabra. They're all listed together at the end of Parshas Vayakel. So why in Parshas Tetzaveh do we find the golden altar, the Mizbeach HaKetores, listed alone? The Ramban responds to this question. He says, the goal is the Torah is teaching us a fundamental lesson. It's listed here at, after all the impl implements, after all the clothing that the Kohan, the priests would wear, in order to demonstrate its connection to a fundamental concept. The verse says at the end of Peret, Chavtes, Pasuk, Mem Gimel, chapter 29, verse 43, V'nikdash b'chvodi, and it will be sanctified in God's honor, in my honor. God is the speaker in that verse. In other words, the idea of the golden altar, the incense altar, is linked to the idea that the whole tabernacle, the whole mishkan, is just dedicated to the honor of God. It's not designed to be some world heritage site, it's not designed to be a tourist trap like Mecca is, where millions of people go and the government makes a ton of money off of it. That's not the point of the tabernacle of the Mishkan. The point of the Mishkan is to give honor, to, to pay homage to God. And that's the main point. And I think this idea can teach us a profound lesson. But there's another question that I believe we need to address first. Why do we need two altars in the first place? I mean, if you think about it, incense doesn't take up a lot of space. It's a bunch of ground-up spices that's dumped on top of a fire. How big of a fire do you need to have? Not very big. If you're worried about smothering it out, just pour it slowly. And in fact, the copper altar, the altar in the middle of the temple courtyard upon which most sacrifices were burned, had a number of fires there. What, you couldn't put a small fire for the incense? Why did God want to have the special golden altar for the incense and not have all of the offerings brought in the same place outside on the co co copper altar in a temple courtyard? The answer is because the inner altar, the Mizbeach HaKetores, was just for God's honor. In fact, this altar could not be seen from most angles in the temple courtyard. And only a few Kohanim, a few priests, had any clue what was going on on the inside. And it's very telling that the item 
in the temple, in the tabernacle, in the mishkan, designated for God's honor, this golden altar should be inside, should be hidden, should be closed. And I believe this teaches us a fundamental aspect of Judaism. Real greatness, real gold is inside. Only God and each one of us understand and know what we're really thinking, what we're really feeling, and what our motivations are behind our actions. Honoring God, that's truly inside. Because only, because only Hashem knows why we do what we do. By locating this golden altar inside, out of sight, God's demonstrating that our integrity, our faith in God, that's something no one else is going to know about. Yet, it is critical, it is so important to live as proper Jews. King David, David HaMelech, expresses this idea in a particular verse in Psalms, chapter 45, verse 14, Perik Memhei Pasig Yedalet. He writes that, Kol bas melech penima, that that which is honorable in a princess is located inside. Our rabbis explain, what is this Bas Melech referring to? And among others, the author of Orchos Sadikim, Pathways of the Righteous, a ethical and moral work that revolves around the theme of character development, explains that this Bas Melech, that's the Neshama. That's our soul. That true greatness, true goodness, that which is gold and that which is pure, is our intent. No one else is going to see it. No one else is going to know about it. Only ourselves and Hashem and God know what we're truly, really feeling. And the best is inside, is hidden, is that which most people cannot see. It's up to us to ensure that how we act, how we live, how we interface with the outside world is done in the most refined manner in the most pure manner. The golden altar being hidden out of sight reminds us and teaches us that that which is pure, that which is for God's honor, is not necessarily going to be broadcast and revealed to everyone outside. Let us work on our character. Let's polish the diamonds that our soul represent so that we and God will be proud of the people that we've developed in and the potential that we have actualized. Have a great week.